Have you heard about James McAvoy's performance in the upcoming film Speak No Evil? He gives new meaning to terrifying and will scare you speechless. The film is filled with teeth-clenching, seat-clawing suspense and will haunt you forever. Be careful who you trust. Universal Pictures and Blumhouse invite you to Speak No Evil, only in theaters September 13th. For exclusive podcasts and more, sign up at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. This week's Law & Order Marathon winner is CJ Johnson from Columbia, Tennessee. CJ will get a marathon decal showing they watch 26.2 hours of their favorite crime show. To be next week's winner, sign up at lawandorderpodcast.com. I'm Kevin Flynn with Rebecca Lavoy and Michelle Rubenstein, and these are their stories. You think you know who did it, but you don't know who did it, Law and Order. Welcome to These Are Their Stories, the podcast about network TV's most enduring crime franchise and the real-life cases that inspire their shows. I'm Kevin Flynn. Each podcast will break down an episode from either Criminal Intent, SVU, or Original Recipe. And today we're looking at Special Victims Unit, Season 6, Episode 15, Hooked. Six months ago, she was just another 15-year-old. So she started hooking up with half of Queens. After that, it's no big deal to have sex for designer clothes or prostitute yourself in a hotel. She ends up as Trudy Strutt's porn star. She ends up dead on a roof. Joining me to do just that is true crime author and the host of Crime Writers On at Netflix's You Can't Make This Up podcasts, Rebecca Lavoie. Hello, Rebecca. Hi, Kevin. And rounding out our panel is our special returning guest from the Total Betty Podcast Network, It's Michelle Rubenstein. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Kevin and Rebecca. Thank you for having me. Now, how do you define a Betty? And are there any on Law & Order? Oh, what a great question. Well, the Betty is obviously from Clueless. She's a total Betty. Mm -hmm. Wasn't she a Betty? So it's just a fabulous person. Rebecca, I consider you a Betty. Uh, You should. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I don't think... I think... I go with, you know, I, wait, Rollin, wait, wait, am I Betty Draper? Am I like, am I the sad Betty Draper who was eating cottage cheese and burnt toast? Like which Betty? You know what Betty you are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I'm looking, I'm thinking like over all the, the series and I think Eames might be a real Betty, right? Um, right. Isn't she yeah. just like, oh yeah. You know why? Why? Tiny. Tiny. Not that like, this is not like being like Mm -hmm. size preferential, except that Goran is just so huge and she has to put up with that. And she just puts up with Goran, like generally. And I think she's smarter than he is and just like pretends she's not. Exactly. Just to be nice. Exactly. She's she's nice. She's super nice. She's like, I'm just going to let you have this one. And at the end of the day, I'm going to write the report with all the actual facts in it. You know, it's just like (laughs) super nice of her. I'm going to correct your spelling and not (laughs) let you know about it. (laughs) Michelle, of all the franchises, which two cops are your favorite detective team? Favorite law and order detective team. Listen, this, I'm going to be full disclosure here. The last time I visited Law and Order was when I was on with you guys talking mm. about the one episode with Robin Williams for SVU that yeah. my sister was on. That's the last time I watched Law and Order. So So you needed some help. So you just fill in the I blank. Need, I need a little help. Yeah. See, this is like when the Republicans would complain that people would take the ballots to the people <laughs> at the nursing home and they just fill it out for them. I this feel like it. this is w- this is one of those ballots. It's Rebecca. just like that. Exactly Except like it's that. not like that in any exactly way. Exactly <laughs> like that. There's yeah. all this law and order detective team fraud that's going on no except this fraud doesn't matter and it's not really f- this actually is fraud and that really wasn't fraud you know what i mean it was- it's not like that in any way it's just not like that so we're we just supposed to fill in the blank fill in the blank come on tell me show who we're favored uh, favorites finn are. And rollins finn and rollins <laughs> there you go rollins is a betty she's a total betty yeah awesome. when she's having a good hair day I right, now take a look at the first half of this episode, Special Victims Unit Season 6, Episode 15, Hooked. Benson and Stabler investigate the murder of a young woman found on an apartment rooftop. 
She was wearing expensive clothes and her skull was fractured. Ellison Downey, address in Yonkers. Must be a good one. This is an $800 dress. Out on the town, picked up the wrong guy. We cracked her skull with something blunt and heavy. We didn't recover the weapon. Lewis? None, but her panties are pulled down and there's trauma to her vaginal area. The driver's license on the victim says she's 21-year-old Allison, but she's actually her 15-year-old cousin, Lisa Downing. Her recently widowed father thought Lisa was just going out for pizza, not to any Manhattan nightclubs. Her St. Tabitha prep classmate and BFF Angela says Lisa was too busy to date guys, unless she was meeting them on dating sites for quick hookups. The guys range from high school stoner to college Chad. Warner drops a bomb when she tells the detectives Lisa had HIV and exposed, by her calculations, about 7 billion horny teenagers in Mm. New York. Olivia and Elliot ask Dr. Derek Tanner, who Lisa might have told about her diagnosis, but his lips are sealed. Video footage from a high-end boutique shows the victim going into the back room with the store manager before reappearing with her expensive clothes. So when the detectives go back to talk to him, they find him getting a blowjob from Angela. So in a completely foreseeable chain of events, Mm. a couple of Boy Scouts decide instead of pointing their telescopes to the sky, they're going to point them down and peep in the windows. Yes. And just below it is Ursa Major, also known as the Great Bear. I got something great and bear right here. So this is one of those occasions where it's the scouts that wind up on the offender registry and not the <laughs> scoutmaster. Can we just say, like, the scoutmaster is right there. Yeah. The scout is literally saying, I'm looking at a naked girl right there, but like in an innuendo way, right? Yeah. And the scoutmaster at no point is like, that's pervy. Fucking stop doing that, young man. Like, no, Michelle, he's like, let me see. <laughs> yeah, it was really weird. And he's just like, I got something great and bare. And just like slowly zooming. I was like, whoa, whoa, adult, chime in here. Yeah, I know timing is everything, but that just never happens to me. Yep. I'm looking no. at, I mean, I have a binoculars, I got telescope, I got everything. I never see a beautiful woman just with her bare back to the window, like, ha ha. It's gonna. It's gonna. <laughs> By the way, is everything that Melinda says gospel? Because she goes, oh, looking over the body and says, that's an $800 designer dress. And then later on, Elliot says, she was wearing an $800 designer dress. <laughs> I mean, what if, what if it turned out to be like a knockoff and everyone's like, she had a lot of money. And it's like, no, she shopped at Kohl's. <laughs> I know, like this really, I was like, wow, everybody really knows their fashion here. Is this mm. a thing? Is this a, th- a thread? <laughs> Did you these guys characters. see the dress? Wasn't that great? It looked like something you'd buy at Chico's. Yeah. yeah. Not for $800. No. Yeah. I don't yeah. know Warner knows about clothes because she's always cutting them off people. <laughs> she's like, oh, look at that tag. Oh, you know, Maybe that's what she knew. I don't know. <laughs> so Benson and Sampler go to Lisa's school to find out like what kind of girl she is. And, you know, does she get in trouble? So many parents work such long hours. They're too tired to deal with their children. When kids don't get the attention and affection they need, they look for it elsewhere. And Olivia rolls her whole goddamn head and looks at Elliot. <laughs> Why? Because if you don't get the attention, you're going to have crazy kids. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, right. The principal right. explains that these girls have been wearing these multicolored bracelets, these sex bracelets, yes. they call them. Different colored bracelets the girls wear, signaling which sex acts they're willing to perform. Uh, yellow's hugging, purple's kissing, red is for a lap dance, blue is for oral sex, and well, don't make me say what black is for. Yeah. Which, by the way, going to adopt that at home tomorrow. What? You're going to wear a sex color bracelet? This is a very efficient way to communicate what you're willing to do. I'm going to be like, taking out the garbage, blowjob, no anal, pretty much that's it. Pay attention to the color. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right? It. It's efficient yeah. as fuck and it's sex positive. Yep. Yep. I, I don't dislike this. I don't. I, I don't see why this is problematic in any way. Well, Michelle, I don't know if you noticed this, but the principal went in, she's talking about this, and she reaches into a drawer and pulls out a metric ton of these bracelets. And yeah. it's just like, it's like she was handing them out at a trade show or something like that. <laughs> All these different colors. 
I'm like, you know, when I'm 15 years old, I want to join the Boy Scouts and go to this high school. Right. And also, this is 2005. I was in high school in 2005. And maybe I missed out on the whole sex bracelet thing. Or I'm just not from like, you know, a prestigious boarding school here. I don't know. Missed the boat on that. But we can adopt it now at home. Yeah. I like where your head's at, Rebecca. Very, very efficient. Not tonight. Yeah. Purple. That's right. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you, I've got, I I think the color system that they have going on is wrong. Here's what I think. White should be, no, staying pure. No. Blue should be just over the pants. (laughs) Okay. Right? Jeans. Makes sense. Okay. Yellow bracelet. Yeah. PP party. (laughs) Oh, golden shower. Yeah. Red, period sex. Yeah, why not? Uh, Green, condoms from ethically sourced latex. Oh, not bad. And and purple, only if Prince is playing on the radio. Yes. Not bad. Not bad at all. So Elliot goes to his happy place because he gets to say the line, what kind of parents would... (laughs) (laughs) Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. So he later rushes to Kathleen's school because one of the boys that Lisa may have infected with HIV is Kathleen's old boyfriend. (gasps) And he wants to know if she's been exposed. Did you do anything with him? I mean, did we have sex? Yes. It's private. I know. Why are you asking me? I can't tell you. So why should I tell you? Because I'm your father and it's really important. I didn't have sex with Jed. Did you do anything else with him? No. That's why you broke up with me, because I wouldn't. Mm. And Elliot could not be more proud. Yes. Okay. I have so many things to say about this scene. A. Yeah. The fact that one of Elliot's kids felt like they could say to him, Dad, that's private, tells me that they have not been watching this television show. (laughs) Because as far as I know, nothing is private in this household when it comes to their father's intrusive parenting practices. No, 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 no. I'm not wrong, right? No, you're not wrong. I said no. Second, it's glad, it's, it's good to know that there was at least a moment where Kathleen was a prude. Good for her for uh, having that Rebecca, moment. Uh, that's not sex positive to call her a pro. I am very sex positive, but she had her moment, right? And Elliot got to enjoy that moment in the prude dad's son, which, as you know, is his goal in life to have one child who will not do it. He had that moment, that one moment in the sun. It's Good like for I, him. I succeeded. Michelle, I don't know how you would feel about uh, your father coming and asking you in front of the entire school whether he put it anywhere. Yeah, no, wouldn't be happy about it. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm not answering this right now. So, or ever. It's just awkward. And probably like you got caught off guard showing up at the school. And then he's like, oh, I'll pick you up on Saturday or whatever. Oh. It's like, I could have had a phone <laughs> call or something. Is that her immediate thing is like, <laughs> Kathleen, I need to talk to you about something. And her immediate is like, you and mom are getting divorced. <laughs> And what does he say? I wouldn't tell you like this. No. Not in front of school. That would be embarrassing. By the way, have you done oral or anal with this guy? (laughs) It's important. I got to know. It's important. But I can't tell you why. (laughs) In the one moment of discretion I've ever had in my entire history as a police officer. She's like, I know why. I can't tell you why. (laughs) <laughs> Elliot like has this look. He looks like Mr. Miyagi when he realizes that Daniel's son gets that wax off has been a defense the whole time. <laughs> we get to see somebody before they were famous. Before they were famous. So who's grinding it out as Angela? Hayden Panettiere. Hayden Panettiere. It's a college student. He took her to some clubs, got her some clothes. He was rich. She was really into him until we started getting jealous. Playing down to clown teenager Angela and Jelly. <laughs> save the cheerleader, save the world. Yes. She was a Claire in Heroes, and she yeah. started out on One Life to Live at age four. Yes. Then got a break on The Guiding Light. Other titles include Remember the Titans, A Bug's Life, and most recently, she was Juliet Barnes, country music superstar on ABC's Nashville. And don't forget her incredible appearance on SVU as a tiny little kid trying to convince Liv to adopt her. Imagine having wow. her instead of serial killer Noah as your adopted child. <laughs> Hayden has had her struggles. She's been to rehab for alcohol and opioids. Her 28-year-old brother suddenly died this year from an uh, mm. enlarged heart. That's so sad. And uh, she left her boyfriend, Brian Hickerson, after his domestic violence arrest two years ago. She says now that they are both sober, they're renewing their relationship. I don't want to shit on people's life choices, but I, that doesn't mm. sound great. 
Being famous as a kid fucking sucks. Don't judge her. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Panettiere E is, <laughs> well, it's Italian for baker, right? Okay. Uh, she has a tattoo that says live without regrets in Italian. And of course, it's misspelled. Mm. Oh. Uh, not regrets. That would be right. English. Uh, but that word is, everybody figured this out when she displayed it on the cover of Glamour magazine. Oh, wait a minute. Gloomer magazine is what it was. <laughs> Poor Hayden. Oh. We do have some Hey, It's That Guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's that guy. Who's playing pornographer Max Long? Anyone know? No. No. We can't bust me for this. It's an honest mistake. It's child porn. Where were you Monday night? Filming. Wendy does the White House. That actor is Matt Malloy. Seven Law & Order Universe appearances, including the rare Law & Order LA credit. <gasps> He's had more appearances in 150 TV shows and films, including Armageddon, Election, Perry Mason and Six Feet Under. He's currently news editor Bob Young on ABC's Alaska Daily. Nobody watches The that. Hillary Swank. What? <laughs> I never even heard of that. You haven't heard of that? It's yeah. also on ABC. Maybe, I know. Yeah, are you familiar with ABC? I don't think a lot of people No, people know. watch that, but like people have told me they watch it, but then like I don't know actually know anyone in person who watches it. It's one of those yeah. people, wow. people will tweet to me and they'll be like, you should check it out. And I'm like, yeah, I've never mm. heard of it. Yeah, thanks. By the way, that show, Alaska Daily... Uh, fortunately for them, they do not fil film it in Alaska. Mm. They do the thing where they fly oh. in to Fairbanks, mm -hmm. they shoot a bunch of exteriors, and then they fuck right off to Vancouver, <laughs> where the snow is the same exact color. <laughs> <laughs> so can you give me the name of the actor playing Andy Wall? Whoa, 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 wait a second. You think I killed her? I would never hurt her. When we split up. I, I haven't seen her in months. Yes. You know his name? I do. I know because I'm a Mad Men fan. His name is Aaron Staten. Mm hmm. And he played the very hateable Ken Cosgrove. Yes. Oh my God. I totally missed <laughs> that. And I love that yeah. man. <gasps> yeah. I saw baby Ken Cosgrove show up and I got the douche chills mm. in a serious way. Uh, uh, and not just because oh he God. fucked a 15 year old thinking she was like 74 years old as this character on this show. <laughs> uh, yes, Aaron yeah. Stanton. Yeah. yeah but, uh, most recently, he's been in. Um, Peacock's based on a true story and the right stuff, but yes, best known as Ken Cosgrove. <laughs> Ken is the character who got shot in the face while yeah. hunting with his asshole clients from Chevy. <laughs> and in the rest of the series, he wore an eye patch. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. How desperate for a job do you have to be that you will not leave after that? Um, I don't know. Just ask our former vice president, Dick oh, Cheney. <laughs> and the guy he shot in the face. Yeah, did Ken Cos Cosgrove <laughs> apologize to Chevy? For <laughs> Man, he was nominated, Aaron okay, was, he yeah. was nominated for a BAFTA award for his acting in a video game. Really? What video game? Yeah, he was Detective Cole Phelps in L.A. Noir. Uh, he rises, this character rises through the ranks, uh, working in 1940s uh, LAPD, he starts in the traffic division, hmm. goes to homicide, then Dying while investigating a morphine distribution ring. <sighs> On Reddit, one of the big, the biggest okay. questions, the most asked question about how to do the video game, the cheats are, they're not certain how to fire a warning shot. And it's like, this is LAPD, there are no warning shots. <laughs> Does anyone recognize the actor playing Mr. Downing, the murder victim's father? Oh, that guy. <laughs> oh, God, my baby. Oh, it might be hard to recognize Shyler Hensley. His big role was as Frankenstein's monster in the film Van Helsing. Oh, really? Yeah, square head, green skin, the whole the whole nine yards. Wait, Van Helsing is the one with Anthony Hopkins, right? Yes, yeah, he plays <laughs> Dracula's hunter, Van Helsing. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's got all the other characters. And he actually had a, a second role in that same film. He played... Uh, Mr. Hyde, but they dubbed his voice with Robbie Coltrane instead. Wow. They're like, yeah, we, we, we're seeing this monster oh. more as a Hagrid kind of character, so not your voice. Wait a minute. Frankenstein's <laughs> monster, Mr. Hyde, and this dude. <laughs> Fuck, Mary kill. <laughs> <laughs> we have some repeat offenders. R repeat offender. Peter Herman is back as, of course, Mr. Mariska Hargitay. No, I mean, he's attorney Trevor Langdon. About time, my client's been extremely cooperative. Allison Sisko. 
is the ne'er-do-well Kathleen Stabler. You and Mom are getting a divorce. No. We do have a Hey, It's That Girl. Hey, it's that girl. Rebecca, can you tell me who is playing Allison, the cousin who lived? I actually can tell you that. That's Jessica Dunphy. She was going out with this college guy. And he was into music, and she begged me for my license so she could get into clubs with him. She played Allison Stewart in As the World Turns. I always recognize someone when they show up from All My Children or As the World Turns, especially As the World Turns, because as you know, Kevin, yeah, As the World Turns was the greatest soap opera to ever be on television. Hey, that's great. I knew you were going to fucking do that. <laughs> I knew it. But it was. It was. <laughs> Well, please tell that actress to put a photo on her IMDb so I'll stop and look at it. <laughs> Did you know who's playing Nikki Sims, a.k.a. Quick Nick? Yeah, I hooked up with her for a while, but that was like months ago. No. That teenage kid, that's Michael Dreyer. He's probably best recognized as Cisco in Mr. Robot and Eddie on Sneaky Pete. Seven Law & Order Universe appearances, including as Kenny Kyle on Law & Order Organized Crime. This was the mob hitman who collected exotic rats and was nearly killed by rat poison. Hmm. Oh, no, wait. Killed by a poisonous rat. That's different. (sighs) I only watched the scenes in organized crime where Elliot and uh, Olivia almost get together. I'm not going to lie. I fast forward through all the rest of it. I watch Twitter and when Twitter's like, oh, my God, I just fast forward ben to that Slur show. Ben alert. Ben Slur alert. <laughs> I watch. I still watch SVU. And then I only watch organized crimes for those parts and for when Kathleen shows up. Well, I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell you what you fast forwarded through. This okay. guy, uh, he nearly ran over Stabler with his car. So points to him. Oh, yeah. Big points. Big wow. props. Wow. 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 Lastly, can you tell me the name of the male porn star who looks like Thor? <laughs> the one in the background that uh, Benson and Stabler are cock blocking from the three way. Is it Chris Hemsworth? <laughs> no? No. That's Marcus Collins. He was a background actor on shows like One Life to Live in General Hospital. Hmm. He got his break on America's Got Talent, The Champions. That, that season, he was a member of the Texas Tenors. It's like the three, do you remember the three tenors? Yeah. And then there were like all these ripoffs. It was like the lady tenors and the Irish tenors, and they had the three Texas tenors. They come out, they sing the songs, they wear tuxedos, but they also have cowboy boots and cowboy hats on. Okay. That sounds cheap. Yeah. So here they are. (laughs) Uh, From the three, there's J.C. Fisher, who's listed as the romantic tenor. Marcus, who is the contemporary tenor. And John Hagen, who's listed as the tenor. (laughs) <laughs> the, aren't the they tenor. all technically contemporary tenors since whatever year this came out and was right. that I, year i guess okay so i have to say that in february we missed the ttt fan club royal caribbean cruise <gasps> uh oh. this weekend by the way they are going to be at the hoover auditorium in lakeside ohio then an extended engagement at the grand shanghai in branson missouri they're real wow still they, they exist. are real. still They exist. Yeah, Billboard magazine ranked them as the number 10 classical artists in the world for that year. 20 million views on YouTube. So on the TV show. Wait, how many Spotify streams? I I don't know. I have I haven't I could I could go next and check that out. So (laughs) on America's Got Talent, they sang like, um, you know, like standards, like things like you expect Unchained Melody and God Bless the USA. This is this is Marcus. The USA is a standard. Jesus, Kevin. They're the Texas tenors. (laughs) And so they they harmonize and stuff. But this is this is Marcus and his uh, his solo. Yeah, what do you think? He's fine. He's fine. He sounds like he's in a toilet paper commercial. <laughs> <laughs> a toilet paper commercial? Like, you just imagine him being like the brawny paper towel guy yeah. or something? Yeah. yeah. Kind of oh, cheesy. Yeah. So the guys finally wanted to cross over, so they released a single, and it's called Boot Daddy. No. Boot Daddy. Boot Daddy. Boot Daddy. Is the intro just an intro all along? Who's the audience for this? For real, who's the audience for this? <laughs> us. This is it. This is it. Us. Do they listen to contemporary country music or don't they listen to contemporary country music? They go on cruises. Music? Oh. 
Boot Daddy. That one is not a tenor. No. By the way, Boot Daddy, that is the brown colored bracelet. Uh. <laughs> we learned that Lisa has been meeting boys just about any way she can, including going on a, a website so teens can hook up with one another. And I guess this is before Tinder, but it's I don't know. Tinder. Teen. Yeah. She meets a guy named Quick Nick, and that is not a nickname I hope stays with him. <laughs> oh. I'm Quick Nick. I do. <laughs> there was that one kid who says, oh, you know, only ugly people do. Only ugly people date. Oh, what was that? God. Yeah. No. Only ugly people date, meaning you don't want to have relationships with ugly people. Oh, oh, oh. You get it now? I get oh. oh. That's harsh, right? Yeah. Well, now, you understand it's harsh now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that I've explained it to you. know, it, it makes me you. feel better growing up knowing that because... I, I couldn't date. It, was, it wasn't because I was ugly. It was the opposite. <laughs> there you go. That's what we can tell ourselves. Yeah. I didn't get any dates because I was too good looking. I was too good looking. I did not too make the ugly cut. <laughs> I'd go to the prom with you, but you're not ugly enough. Right, right. Just not enough. All right. So they talk about how the epidemic of teen HIV is uh, affecting everybody, I guess. Warner has this computer simulation on how the case is spread. Once there are a certain number of carriers, which we call critical mass, the disease begins to spread exponentially among those who don't use condoms. The red dots on the screen represent each person infected in just one week. And that's after two weeks. And it's beeping, and there's another red dot, and then finally it looks like the computer Joshua from War Games. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Blows up the whole, it's like they're blowing the whole areas of the city. It's like, no, not the meatpacking district. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so they figure out how the girls are getting all their expensive clothes because they've been going into the back room with the manager. Mm. And because timing is everything, they walk in and they hear moaning, only to discover the manager getting a blowjob from Angela. <sighs> And uh, I'll say that if you're secret secretly having sex at work, why would you be that loud? I did it for the clothes. Right? Yeah. And it, like in the middle of the day, it's not even like after hours. No. Gross. Just fellatio going on. Just. Can just we gross. just talk about how the fact that the clothes don't get any better? The free clothes? <laughs> they just don't. Oh they go God. into Allison's <laughs> closet or what's her face? The real victim, what's her face? Now you sucked a dick for that? Lisa. Lisa. They go into Lisa's Lisa. closet. There's a yeah. ball, like chinchilla vest situation and a fucking blazer. Like, I'm sorry, what are you, 15? Like, where are you she going? She is 15. Are you going to like a retire? Are you going to the Golden yeah. Girls house after this? Like, why <laughs> are you giving away BJ's for these ugly fucking clothes? But also, and then Benson's like, this is this much money and this is this much money. I'm like, how How do you know? You're a cop. Like, You're like, giving away all your money to Lucy right. the nanny. Like, you shouldn't know how much any of this shit costs. No, no, no. no. But, and no. I guess they say, like, afterwards no. the manager would go and he would pay for the clothes because... Getting head from a teenager is fine, but shoplifting, that's a bridge too far. <laughs> Have you heard about James McAvoy's performance in the upcoming film Speak No Evil? He gives new meaning to terrifying and will scare you speechless. The film is filled with teeth-clenching, seat-clawing suspense and will haunt you forever. Be careful who you trust. Universal Pictures and Blumhouse invite you to Speak No Evil, only in theaters September 13th. Surprise, Bill? Need fast funds? CashNet USA can help. When you need money fast, be the hero. Apply in minutes at CashNetUSA.com and get a fast decision. All loans subject to lender approval. Speed of funding is subject to verifications and your bank's processing times. All right, let's take a look at the second half of this episode. Angela tells Liv she and Lisa were doing more than just blowing the store manager for clothes. Louis Vuitton bag, Prada shoes, Dolce Gabbana top. That's at least two grand right there. You're telling me that one guy spent that much on you. It's not like I do this all the time. You want to wind up like Lisa? No. So she was hooking at the mall with you, right? Yes. Until she started using the hotel. After being recruited by a desk clerk... She says that Lisa had been turning tricks out of a hotel room. Then after busting up that escort operation, Elliot learns that Lisa's biggest customer was 
Dr. Tanner. <gasps> Lisa's father just learned this out, too, as the detectives <gasps> break up his attempt to break up the doctor's face. Tanner says, damn it, I was in love with that 15-year-old HIV-infected prep school call girl with the blowjob discount dress and precisely $800 worth, and I was going to leave my wife for her. <gasps> what? And later that night, Benson and Stabler find Tanner shot in his apartment. Among his things are Angela's monogrammed school scarf. A morally dubious but constitutionally affirmed search of Angela's locker turns up, what else? A videotape of Angela, Lisa, and Turner making a porno. It seems 15-year-old Lisa was moonlighting as Trudy Strutt's adult film actress. <laughs> Producer Max Long claims he didn't know that she was underage nor that she had HIV, but with an assist from the rest of the squad, they find the connection that brings it all together. Max Long was blackmailing Dr. Tanner into HIV testing his porn stars under assumed names so those actors wouldn't learn he was knowingly exposing them. The pornographer learned Lisa to the roof and fatally struck her with his tripod. But who killed Tanner? Angela admits to Stabler that she shot Tanner trying to retrieve that sex tape just because she wanted her life back. Okay, <laughs> so to get to the bottom of this prostitution ring, Elliot checks into the hotel as a sleazy businessman, which is just Elliot in sunglasses. Mm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. My big undercover. Um, uh, yeah, I'm a little stiff after my flight, so <laughs> what can you and do for me? him just being like, I just need to be taken care of because it's long flight. And the guy's like, I got you. I was like, wow, right out in the open. Wow. Okay. I guess uh, it's that's that kind of hotel. Uh, that, that's what you do there. I got yeah. you by sending you a 30-year-old that we're going to pretend is a 15-year-old. He's like, Ugh. younger the better. And then she shows up. He's like, you didn't get the assignment. Right. <laughs> now, for some reason, Mr. Downing didn't need to go undercover, shake down a call girl and the front desk guy to figure out about five minutes right before the cops that Dr. Tanner was involved. The guy who doesn't know anything about his daughter figures this out before the cops do. How is that possible? Say that again. They're doing all this stuff to figure out, to like come back to like, oh no, Tanner's involved. Yeah. And they walk in to confront him, but the dad, who doesn't know dick about his daughter, yes. figured this out five minutes before they do and is beating them up. Excellent question. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I was a little confused with that too, to be honest. Yeah, excellent question. Um, we'll just go with it. Yeah, maybe he looked at her yeah. base union page messaging i i don't know i don't know <laughs> so elliot confronts dr tanner and by confronts i mean he picks him up throws him around the room mm -hmm. he accuses the doctor of you know you're sleeping with a 15 year old girl he says look i never paid for sex before but that night i did and it was incredible oh he's so gross he dude. is gross like disgusting and allegedly married this yes. was so great yeah so we're just going to skip over the frequently mentioned fact on this podcast that it is illegal in the state of New York to create pornography, even if you have a studio like True. Max Long Studios. True. We're not doing anything illegal. What the hell is this about? In what states is it legal, Kevin? California and New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Yes. And that's it. Really Welcome Hampshire. to New Hampshire, where you can videotape yourself or other <laughs> Fucking. people. Fucking. <laughs> Live free or die. So weird. And that's actually a there plot point in it's another so SVU weird. episode. So these people should know that shit. Yeah. But how many wow. times do they walk in and what the guy the says, we're not breaking any laws. Yeah, you're breaking all the laws. <laughs> yeah. And they've got all sorts yeah. of expensive, yeah. like, you know, lighting going on. And then, like, the bell goes off. Cut. What? We're filming here. Not anymore. The cameraman has got a little camcorder in his hand. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's got a $300 Sony cam and... It's like, yes, that seems accurate. All right. I don't mean to burst your bubble, Kevin, but yeah. have you ever watched pornography? <laughs> I have. The camera seems right. <laughs> the studio with all the lighting and the boom stand and the alarm that goes ding. A little much. When, you know, they cut. I think that's a little, yeah. You're mm -hmm. correct. You know why? Because these days, porn is on a screen that's this big. Mm -hmm. So you can literally film it with anything. In those days, a camera would have had to have been slightly better quality. Is that what you're the case you're making? No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying they're going way overboard trying to pretend like this production studio is a major league production yeah. studio because everything is high end except for the little fucking camera that the guy is 
they they depend the whole thing on. Do you think really? it's like it's like me using my iPhone voice memo for NPR? I'm doing Morning Edition into my phone like a speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they tell you know uh, Max Long the identity, or I should say the fate of Lisa, Max is like, "Oh no, she was a daughter to me." What the heck? Yeah, Ellie's like, you get off watching your daughter have sex with people? Yes, next question. <laughs> I'm a pornographer. What morals do you think I have? <laughs> None. You think I would lie about checking their ID? <laughs> so here's Olivia's hot take. Because Lisa started hooking up with half of Queens, it's no big deal that she becomes a prostitute and a child porn star. Mm. I just think Olivia's jealous. Of all the oh. of all the schlong that I think Olivia is being a judgy little bitch in this episode. She was mm. twice. I Michelle. am O. Oh. Twice she says you forgot to mention that Lisa was hooking up with half of Queens. Yeah, it's icky. It is like we get it, but she was fifteen, so like you yeah, know. she was a victim yeah. of her circumstance. Her mother had just fucking right. died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's not forget that part. Nine months ago and. When they go to Java Jake's discount Starbucks coffee to confront Angela, mm -hmm. and she's literally mm -hmm. wearing a T-shirt and cardigan, they slut shame her about her super regular outfit. Bear midriff. You dress up like that to do your homework? Everyone dresses like this. Including Lisa. These people. These fucking people. They clearly never watched Clueless, right? She's like, <laughs> clearly. Everyone dresses clearly. this way. And I'm like, literally right. everyone did. I mean, I just, I right. don't get it. Like, they're very out of touch. They're very out of touch. Yeah. Yeah. So after the arrest, Good point. Stabler meets again with uh, Mr. Downey. He says, I know how much you love Lisa. But not as much as the Texas tenor loved her. Yellow bracelet, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> but somehow, you know, Elliot is the one who has to try to calm down and relate to Mr. Uh, Downey. Yes. You know, after he tries to beat up the doctor. Yes. And his whole life, he's saying like his whole life is for nothing. Right. Mr. Downey's at the end of his rope. His wife is dead. Mm -hmm. His daughter is dead. He's like, I have nothing to live for. And Elliot's answer is, think of your daughter. I think he says, do you have a priest? And I'm like, Elliot, you should not be doing this. Michelle, did you know that Elliot used to be a hostage negotiator? <laughs> <laughs> really? No, of course not. He flunked out the first day. <sighs> I mean, after the, you know, after I mean, a couple a of hostages. He was a Marine or some bullshit, yeah. right? <laughs> It's like, why don't you just suck it up? Seriously. Hey, don't just wow. rub some dirt on it. <laughs> Go for a run. <laughs> Go for a run. You know what helps me? Push-ups. <laughs> you know what helps me? Lifting weights in the locker yeah. room. <laughs> Literally, in this episode. You know what helps me? Confronting well, my daughter outside her school about her only. sex life. <laughs> yeah. I learned so much about my daughter. <laughs> If only you had done that, maybe you wouldn't be in this situation, Mr. Uh, Downing. Maybe. If you'd only asked what color that bracelet was. <laughs> What's that for? Live strong? <laughs> That's a live strong bracelet. If you get the yellow live strong ones, it means that you'll touch one testicle. <laughs> Have you heard about James McAvoy's performance in the upcoming film Speak No Evil? He gives new meaning to terrifying and will scare you speechless. The film is filled with teeth-clenching, seat-clawing suspense and will haunt you forever. Be careful who you trust. Universal Pictures and Blumhouse invite you to Speak No Evil, only in theaters September 13th. Oh, I've got too many bills. If you need funds, you can apply in minutes at cashnetusa.com and have the money in your account as soon as the same business day. Okay, got it. Applying now. They've been helping hardworking people cover emergency expenses since 2004. Hey, look, I got it. You've got this. When you need money fast, be the hero. All loans subject to lender approval. Speed of funding is subject to verifications and your bank's processing times. See cashnetusa.com for more details. All right, let's take a look at the real-life story that inspired this episode. It's time for a Rip from the Headlines. You think you know who did it. You think you know who did it. But you don't know who did it. You don't know who did it. Rip from the Headlines. Inspiration for this story comes from the life of adult film actress Tracy Lords. 
Born Nora Louise Kuzma in 1984, her high school boyfriend got her pregnant at the age of 15. Needing money for an abortion, she used a fake birth certificate to get a job as a nude model. She was soon recruited to appear in pornographic films, taking the stage named Tracy Lords. Although she was secretly underage, she became the biggest actress in the adult industry. By the time she turned 17, she created her own film distribution company, making her the world's biggest porn star. Three weeks after turning 18, authorities got a tip that Lords had been underage when she made all of the movies. The revelation seemed to take the industry by surprise. Producers and distributors were arrested on child pornography charges, and millions of dollars were spent withdrawing her previous movies from the market. Lords transitioned into mainstream films, winning roles in the movie Crybaby and TV series Married with Children, Roseanne and Melrose Place. Today, Tracy Lords continues her career in the entertainment industry, trying her hand at directing, singing, fashion design and voiceover work. <laughs> So here are some of Tracy's uh, movies. Porn in the USA. <laughs> Lust in the Fast Lane. Huh? Sex Fifth Avenue. That was pretty clever. Wait, what? Sex Fifth Avenue. Oh, like like what? S-E-X. Sex Fifth, like Sax Fifth Avenue. Oh, I get it now. Oh, Jesus H. Christ. All I'm right. sorry. It took me a little bit. Ah, just, a, just the tip. I get it. Tailhouse Rock. Okay. And for, for me, the winner, Beverly Hills Cop You Later. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no yeah. not so good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what your official position is on the adult film industry, but do you think that the producer should get just a little bit of slack in this because she gave them a fake ID and falsified her identity? Is that really on them? Ugh, that's a great question. Yes, please come to the defense of pornographers. I know. I know. I know. It's like, well... You gave us what we asked for. This is our requirements. I'm not going to dig further. I think that immediately taking the things off the shelves was the right idea. Oh, well, they had no choice. It wasn't like they, oh. they, everything on the shelf is now we. But you know, you legal, know yeah. those motherfuckers didn't want to do that. Oh, well, no, it's a lot of money to because do Because they were immediately going to make more money. That's what they should not be given slack for was fighting to keep it on the shelves, which they probably did. They did not. They, they knew it was radioactive. They knew they had to get rid of it. The big expense was... Recalling all that material, right? Pulling which it all people, off the which, shelf. Which all of, all of I mean, not my dad, but Kevin, probably yours already had in their closets, right? All the Tracy Lords films. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, so she has made a you know crossover career, you know, with that appearance in Cry Baby, and has done other things. I, I'll just say, generally speaking, I'm surprised there aren't more adult film crossover stars. I mean, you got the fucking Texas Tenor yeah. crossover star. Yeah. You know, reality shows and... You have a lot voice. of Playboy models who've become like crossover right. stars in, in many other ways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is, it, is yeah. that all like, I mean, when you scratch your chin, I mean, we want... We're always like have, looking for these ingenues that we can put in yeah. films and then like dress them scantily and like sexualize them. And it's like, here's somebody who's already demonstrated mm -hmm. they can do that in a commercial setting why do you not want her to be in the bikini or whatever? I don't know, Kevin. Why don't you go to Hollywood and become a <laughs> casting agent and change that culture? I think it might be that they're not good at reading lines. Well, perhaps. Right. Because if you have seen the interaction with the pizza delivery boy, you realize she's not really mining. Or what? If you can convince me that you actually want to fuck your stepdad. But what is it with these? <laughs> with. We, right, Michelle. I'm You're just, like, just going to say this is a genre side side conversation uh -huh. that I will never understand. Mm -mm. Stepmom, stepdad. That is one of your parents. What, that is one of what your. What was the, the algorithm <laughs> on you, poor? We're like, that's what's got to be the top thing now. Stepbrother, stepsister. <laughs> that is your family. That yeah. is your family. Yeah. If you want to mm -mm. convince me that you want to fuck your stepbrother or you want to fuck your stepsister, you should win a goddamn Oscar. Goddamn Oscar. Why not? That's true. You, know, very what you, true. you know what you could win? Yeah. A fucking BAFTA. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they have categories for everything. <laughs> Shut your fucking face, Uncle Fucker. <laughs> so the prosecution of X excitement video. Mm -hmm. uh, which was the film company there. It went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Prosecution for what? Well, for, for hiring an actor who gave them a fake ID? No, for uh, producing 
Child pornography. Okay. The owner got a year in prison and okay. a fine, but they appealed the constitutionality of the law on the basis of the grammatical use of the word knowingly. Oh. So a lower court reversed, and then it went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and the justices agreed, seven to two, that the term knowingly did apply to subsections, although it didn't appear in those subsections. So he did have to go to jail and serve the uh, the sentence. It's an interesting way, you know, the whole thing spun on not just not the essence of whether he they knew but whether the law was written such that they wrote a loophole into it so he ended up having to go anyway wow. scalia I mean, you know the two scalia dissented and clarence thomas recused himself because he had a copy of the adventures of tracy dick the case of the missing stiff <laughs> of course he did it's the only time he refused himself. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it was an unplanned pregnancy that changed the course of Nora Kuzma's life. She needed money for the abortion, and that's how she got into porn. In 2007, at age 39, Tracy Lords became unexpectedly pregnant. At that time, she was working on the Kevin Smith comedy, Zach and Miri Make a Porno. Mm-hmm. And that's when she gave birth to Gunner Lords Lee. And that was the best fed baby in Hollywood. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that is going to do it for us. We want to thank our special guest, Michelle Rubenstein. Michelle, where can our listeners follow you online? Yes, you can follow us at Total Betty Podcast Network if you're into nostalgic teen dramas. And if you're into movies and friendship, check out Movie Friends Podcast. I'm not into friendship, but I know Rebecca Lavoie is. Rebecca, how can our listeners follow you? Uh, You can follow me following the Total Betty's podcast podcast network but in the meantime if you don't want to follow me there you can follow me everywhere at Reb Lavoy. You can tweet X post whatever the fuck this thing is called now at Law and Order Pod and follow us on Instagram which is still called Instagram at These Are Their Stories Podcast. Our newsreader was Cy Freighter our theme music was composed and performed by Uncanny Valleys. Content assistance from Travis Roy. Lily Flynn handles promotions. All clips in this podcast were used in compliance with the U.S. Copyrights Act Fair Use Exemption for criticism and commentary. Go to lawandorderpodcast.com and sign up for our newsletter for a chance to be our next Law & Order Marathon winner. These Are Their Stories was recorded in the yoga loft above the bodega in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi studio and is a production of Partners in Crime Media. Partners in Crime Media. Back so soon? Oh no, what happened? A little incident at the dog park. We gotta head to the vet. Oh, not again? These bills. We can use CashNet USA. We can apply in minutes, get a fast decision, and have the money in the account as soon as the same business day. All right, Cheddar, back in the car. When you need money fast, be the hero. All loans subject to lender approval. Speed of funding is subject to verifications and your bank's processing times. See CashNetUSA.com for more details.